San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio police investigating a shooting that's landed one man in the hospital. We'll tell you what we know coming up next. City officials across the country and across the city are wondering how long they can continue con operating services before the Omicron variant makes it absolutely impossible. And speaking of the city, taking a live look out there at the Alamo City, 56 degrees to start your Sunday morning. What is the rest of the weekend? What does a work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. It is 6 o'clock this Sunday, January 9th. What did you end up doing yesterday? I did a fitness class. Nice. And then I didn't leave the house afterwards. Just, yeah. <laughs> it was it was like it was just kind of, you know, that weather. It was yeah. perfect. Stay in, watch a movie. Good for you going to the fitness class. Yeah, it was damp and chilly yesterday. And this morning, not as damp as it was yesterday. You know, we're really not dealing with widespread drizzle, but there are still some areas of fog out there. Uh, take a look outside. We can actually see from the camera this morning. Visibility is fine around San Antonio, but up in the hill country, you can see in Kerrville down to a quarter of a mile visibility. So there is some fog, especially up in the hill country. But look what's coming our way. A cold front. It's much colder behind this front with temperatures about 20 to 30 degrees colder in spots. It's already freezing in Amarillo and 36 in Lubbock. It's 36 in Junction. That front has moved through the Junction area. We'll be seeing that front move through San Antonio throughout the later part of the morning. And we really won't see temperatures fall, though, until early in the afternoon. So take a look at today. So that front's going to move through and it'll make it windy and breezy. Winds will be from the north at 10 to 20, gusting up to 35 miles per hour. But during the second part of the afternoon and into the evening, temperatures are going to fall. By 10, we'll be in the mid 40s. And by the start of the morning tomorrow, many areas will be in the 30s. However, it's not going to stay frigidly cold over the next couple of days. I've got to look ahead in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a woman is recovering after police say her ex-boyfriend intentionally hit her with his vehicle. This happened just after one this morning on Warsbach and Ironside Drive. Authorities say the woman and her ex-boyfriend got into an argument when he allegedly pulled out a weapon. Another man that was with the woman at the time tried to step, step in. Police say the ex-boyfriend got into his vehicle and hit his ex-girlfriend and took off. Officers say she hit her head on the pavement. Police are searching for the suspect. Also new this morning, San Antonio police tell us they are still searching for multiple suspects after a shooting just north of downtown. That shooting injuring one person. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live. Jonathan, what exactly do we know happened? Well, we know the person who was shot was taken to Bamsey in critical condition, and right now police are telling us the suspects did manage to take off. But this was the scene earlier this morning, just uh, before 3 this morning. Now, San Antonio police responding to this 7-Eleven on San Pedro, just north of downtown. They say the clerk at the 7-Eleven was taking a break outside the store when an argument started between him and a group of four men that were hanging around outside. Now, we've learned one of those men in that group pulled out a gun and shot the clerk several times. Now, Max, Sarah, again, police are still looking for the suspects involved in the shooting, and the case is still under investigation. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Now to the latest in the pandemic, the current rise in positive tests for COVID across the United States. It's causing a breakdown in basic functions and basic services. First responders, hospitals, schools and government agencies have employed an all hands on deck approach to keep the public safe, but they are worried how much longer they can keep up. ABC's Karina Mitchell explains. As the Omicron variant continues to spread, hospitals are overwhelmed. In New York State, elective surgeries at more than three dozen hospitals are temporarily on hold because of low bed capacity. The state recorded more than 90,000 cases on Friday alone. The real issue right now is volume, as the amount of patients that are coming in associated with the COVID-19 and its uh, Omicron variant are simply depleting hospital resources, staff, and uh, bringing the hospital to a capacity that is not sustainable. New Hampshire hospitals are also feeling the effects. This surge that we're experiencing now is the largest volume of patients that have been the sickest, and it's been going on the longest of all the waves that we've had. So in many ways, this has been the worst at a time where we really thought we weren't going to have to deal with this again. 
Earlier in the week, the state's governor deploying members of the National Guard to provide support to hospitals and long-term care facilities. Also sending in the National Guard, California. Governor Gavin Newsom activating more than 200 members to help with staffing and crowd control at testing sites. And in New York City, state officials are adding four new COVID testing sites at subway stations. The governor says testing is a big part of the state's strategy to fight COVID. Meantime, classes resume in Los Angeles starting this week. Students and staff will have to be tested before returning to the classroom. Parents lined up to pick up test kits last week. At home testing is just one thing of the toolbox. What we want to focus is making sure that our students are vaccinated, that our teachers are vaccinated, they have their booster shots, that they have masks on and proper PPE to ensure that schools open safely um, on Tuesday. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. And we have a reminder for you, a new COVID-19 testing center opens tomorrow, this time on the city's east side, Metro Health, in partnership with Community Labs and Alamo College District, will open a testing operations at St. Philip's College. The campus is located, that address on your screen right there, 1801 Martin Luther Drive. Testing begins at 8 o'clock until 6 p.m. According to the school's website, testing will be in the school center for learning resources building, Testing will be available Monday through Friday. Two other recently opened testing sites at Palo Alto and Alamo College's district support building will open beginning tomorrow again from 8 to 6, Monday through Friday. All right, we know a lot of people still out there looking for tests, so if you need to know the names and locations of the testing sites, you can head to KSAT.com. Multiple sites around the city. We have a full list for your convenience. Also, you can scan the QR code on your screen right now. That'll take you right to the site. And in the middle of the healthcare professionals treating COVID-19 patients at Bamsey, history is made. A Marine Corps spouse and mother of five was 28 weeks pregnant when she got COVID last June. Not long after Ashley Hernandez's health started declining rapidly, doctors at Bamsey needed to put her on ECMO, a heart-lung bypass system, and they delivered her baby. It turns out it had never been done before here in San Antonio. And as you can see, everything went well. And after one month of isolation, she was finally able to hold her baby boy for the first time. Oh, I'm sure it was so scary, but I'm glad it worked out. No. Yeah. Time now, 6.07, 56 degrees out. Hey, Max, did you watch the Cowboys game? Oh, well, my goodness. So I watched a condensed version of the game this morning. And I got to tell you, lots of highlights, lots of records being broken. We're going to break it all down in just a bit. And the most powerful telescope in the world completes a big task in space. It's another reason for scientists to smile. Oh, there you go. Taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 56 degrees this Sunday morning. What does the rest of the day look like? Sarah Spivey's going to explain it just a bit. Welcome back. Scientists this morning keeping an eye on a volcano eruption in the Galapagos Islands. So the Wolf Volcano on Isabella Island, it began spewing lava over the weekend. Ecuador's Emergency Operations Committee says the new eruption does not pose a risk to humans or a risk to native local species since most of the populated areas are on the other side of the island. Eight people, including national park guards and scientists doing field work on pink iguanas living on the volcano slopes, they were evacuated from the area. No injuries reported. And just for historical perspective, the volcano last erupted in 2015. The James Webb Telescope successfully finished unfolding its giant gold mirror yesterday to the excitement of scientists and space watchers. NASA was cautious about this feat because the mirror is the largest it has ever has been ever built and it initially couldn't fit inside a rocket. Engineers had to design the telescope as a series of moving parts that can fold origami style and fit inside a smaller space for launch. When the mirror unfolded, it's just one over 21, it's over 21 feet. This allows the mirror to collect more light from objects in space and more light means the telescope can show more details. We'll begin to collect data and its first images later in 2022. Sarah Spivey, she's yeah, excited. The, I'm excited. excited so, okay, so you know how when you, you see those videos of people tanning mm -hmm. and they have the mirror mm -hmm. so they can get more sunlight on them? That's kind of what that mirror is. So it collects all the light in so that it can see farther out into space. Very cool. Big tanning bed. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> Tanning in space. That's cool. All right, so we did get some rain yesterday, guys. I want to show you how much rain we got in San Antonio. Wasn't a lot, 16 hundredths of an inch of rain, but that's been our entire amount of rain for the month so far. And we're about 32 hundredths behind the average for the month so far. But when you compare to how much rain we've seen in December, it's since December, it's not a pretty picture. So we've really only seen a little bit more than an inch of rain since December 1st. And that is almost an inch and a half of deficit of rainfall. So we're starting to see drought creep back into South Central Texas. Uh, and even though we got some rain, which we're grateful for, it just wasn't a ton of rainfall for us. And really looking at our rain chances over the next several days, it does not look great. And we have a small chance for rain Thursday and a slightly better chance for rain Saturday as we see our next cold front arrive. But again, it doesn't look great for rain. Hopefully we'll be able to bump that Saturday number up as we get closer to Saturday. But it, it's not looking great. Now, as far as uh, humidity goes and visibility, as far as fog goes, we're actually seeing quite an improvement around San Antonio from this time yesterday. Yesterday, visibility was less than a quarter of a mile in San Antonio. And you can see that there are some areas of fog, especially up in the hill country, the higher elevations. Kerrville, you're looking at some dense fog in the area. And further off to the west, Uvalde Eagle Pass, seeing some dense fog early this morning. But this will be short lived because cold front is on the way and that's going to bring in much drier air in from the north. Now currently outside right now it's a bit chilly. Temperatures are in the 50s in San Antonio and the 40s out toward Del Rio and Uvalde. But look up toward Junction 36 degrees in Junction 36 in Ozona and it's 30 in Amarillo. So below freezing in Amarillo. Can you spot our cold front? It's pretty easy to see there when you look at the temperatures across the state about a 40 degree temperature spread from Amarillo to Corpus Christi, which is currently in the 70s. Now now that front is going to be moving through later this morning and it's going to be a dry front. Notice how all of the rain, all of the storminess is well off to the east around this area of low pressure, uh, but we're just not going to see any rain from this front that's going to move through again during the mid morning hours here. So let's take a look at the forecast temperatures. We're actually going to be able to get up into the low to mid 60s around San Antonio. Not so the case in, in the hill country. It'll stay in the 50s in the hill country, even in the 70s across areas like Cachula and Beeville. But after the early part of the afternoon, our temperatures are really going to fall. In fact, by the evening hours, we'll be in the 40s, even in the 30s in the hill country. And by the start of tomorrow morning, likely going to see a forecast low of about 39 in San Antonio, just slightly above freezing in Kerrville. Might be able to touch freezing in parts of the hill country, but it'll be cold by the start of the morning tomorrow. And this is something you'll also notice how windy it's going to get throughout the day today. Winds are going to gust up to 25 to 30 miles per hour, but tonight winds could gust up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. So if you haven't put up your Christmas decorations yet, Mother Nature may do it for you this evening. Now we are going to be cool tomorrow and Tuesday highs in the upper 50s near 60 degrees. Then a slight warm up. We'll be back into the 70s by Friday and our next front will arrive Friday night, making next Saturday potentially chilly and maybe even a chance for rain on that Saturday. So just to remind you, we're going to have a mix of sun and clouds during the first part of this afternoon. We'll be able to warm up into the low 60s, but then cooling very quickly in the evening hours and winds will get gusty from the north up to 35 miles per hour, especially tonight. And it'll even be breezy tomorrow as well. So a fairly cool forecast for the next several days for us. And again, another cold front arriving Friday night into Saturday of next weekend. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 616, 56 degrees out. Alec Baldwin takes to social media to defend himself against accusations that he's fighting to keep the contents of his cell phone private. What he had today is coming later in GMSA. All right, and how about them Cowboys? Officially a playoff team and right now sitting in the two seed. We're going to have some of the highlights from the huge win on Saturday Night Football. Take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, nine, two, fireball eight, daily four, three, one, zero, six, fireball six. Cash five, seven, nine, 13, 18, 29, Texas lotto, two, four, six, 14, 16, 42. Powerball back to 20, uh, 20 million. Oh, okay. Somebody won the big 600. 20, 21, 36, 60, 65, Powerball 13, power play 10. 
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Oh my goodness, Cowboys fans. If you are a fan, you already know. They put on a show last night. Final regular season game. Taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. Game right here on KSAT 12. First quarter, Dak Prescott. Cedric Wilson, 15-yard touchdown. Tied at 7. Said in the mix for a lot more. Remember, Michael Gallup done for the season. Torn everything. Second quarter, Dak connects with Cedric once again. That's another touchdown. This time, 24 yards. The Cowboys lead in 17-10. The score gets tied at 17-all. Dak to Schultz, Dalton Schultz tight end. Touchdown, 23-17 Dallas. Extra point, no good. Just before half, Dak finds Schultz. Boom, nine-yard score. The Cowboys rolling against the Eagles backups. 30-17, going to halftime. Early fourth quarter, Dak still in the game. Fifth touchdown of the night. A new career high. Corey Clement, former Eagle. Eight yards, and the Cowboys lead 37-20. This is Dak's 37th passing touchdown of the season. A new franchise record. Breaking Tony Rome was marked at 36. Dak's night was done, and the Cowboys handling the Eagles 51 26. Some help Dallas can still move up from fourth to third or even second in the NFC playoffs. Clearly, this was the best things the players wanted to play. I mean, the players, you know, even the guys that uh, didn't play wanted to play. So I, I think that tells you where we are as a football team so um, and that's and that's exciting uh, so this was the the right thing for us to do and and I'm glad the way it turned out it is exciting and here's the thing Dallas now finishing the season 12 and 5 and they are undefeated in the division I don't know if that's more of oh there he is that's my guy um, I don't know if that's more of an indictment on the division or not but good luck to the Cowboys playoff bound Go Cowboys. Happy household last night. Yes. <laughs> 622, 56 degrees out. Well, straight ahead, what Alec Baldwin is saying about that warrant to seize his cell phone. Welcome back. Alec Baldwin taking to Instagram yesterday, disputing media reports that he hasn't turned over his cell phone to investigators in New Mexico. Now Baldwin wants to set the record straight, tell the public that he fully supports the Santa Fe Sheriff's Office looking into that deadly shooting on the Rust movie set. Any suggestion that I am not complying with requests or orders or demands or search warrants about my phone, that that's a lie. This is a process where one state makes the request of another state. Someone from another state, from another state can't come to you and say, give me your phone, give me this, give me that. They can't do that. They've got to go through the state you live in. So a search warrant was issued December 16th for Baldwin's cell phone in connection to that deadly shooting of the director. So there you go. We're still waiting on how this all plays out. Yep. But for now, time is 626, 56 degrees out. Well, inspiring others to live life to the fullest, the encouraging story later on GMSA. And a shooting overnight. We have the latest from investigators and police. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with what we know this morning. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. Just about 6.30 this morning, January 9th. Yesterday felt like a classic San Antonio January day. Yeah, if you enjoyed being indoors. Yeah. I was... I don't like those days. Like, I think I think we deserve those days mm -hmm. every now and then. <laughs> you know, where you're like obligated. You don't have to get off the couch, really, Sarah. Yeah, it just was over the weekend, and so I know a lot of people wanted to get out and enjoy some time outdoors. Today, you'll be able to, but... Uh, there is some fog out there early this morning, especially up in the hill country. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile in Kerrville. Out west in Yavaldi, down to half a mile and down to a quarter of a mile in Eagle Pass, too. Uh, temperatures this morning on the chilly side. It's 55 in San Antonio, but it's 47 in Kerrville and 49 in Yavaldi. We have got a cold front on the way, which is going to be dropping our temperatures during the second part of the day today. So looking across the state, you can see just how much colder it is across Across parts of the Panhandle, it's 30 in Amarillo, 36 in Lubbock. There's that front. It's working its way through the hill country as we speak. It'll be moving through San Antonio mid-morning, late morning hours, and it's going to become windy, especially by tonight. Winds are going to gust up to 35 to 40 miles per hour late tonight. Again, ushering in colder air, keeping things cool for us in the forecast over the next few days. I'll have a look ahead in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a night out at a Northside hookah bar ends in gunfire. Our Jonathan Gothel joins us live. Jonathan, do we know the condition of the victim? 
Well, sir, I can tell you that victim was taken to University Hospital. Police are saying um, he may have been shot in an artery in his leg as he was losing a lot of blood. But this all happened as the victim was leaving that hookah bar and walking to his car. We know San Antonio police responded to the scene at that bar just just after three o'clock this morning on the city's north side. Now, the victim was walking to his car when the light-colored vehicle heading southbound on West Avenue drove by and opened fire, and one of the bullets hitting the victim on the leg. Now, again, the victim was taken to University Hospital. He is said to be in critical condition. The investigation is ongoing, and police are searching for the suspects involved. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. We are working on several developing stories from overnight. Bear County Sheriff's deputies still investigating a deadly fiery crash on the far north side. It ended with two people dead. Details still limited as to what exactly caused this crash, but this is what we know right now. It happened just before 4 p.m. This is Bulverde Road near TPC Parkway. Sheriff's investigators say two vehicles crashed. Those vehicles burst into flames. Both drivers trapped inside. Two people pronounced dead on the scene. We are keeping a close eye on this. We're going to keep you updated online and on air as more information becomes available. A woman is alive after firefighters pulled her out of her car that overturned yesterday into the Medina River. The woman threw a metal barrier near 1937 around 3 a.m., but it was 11 hours later when the tire tracks led neighbors in that area to the river, and that's when they saw a car and a woman inside and they called 911. We're fortunate that that they were able to uh, go down and check because otherwise nobody would have known. Authorities believe the woman could have been in the freezing water for about eight hours. Right now, they believe slick roads and a high rate of speed may have caused the woman to lose control of the car. Deputies are still investigating. Your morning headlines. Fire crews in Texas battling a chemical fire caused by a train derailment. So this scene unfolding near Oakland Union just yesterday. Right now, we know several cars carrying denatured alcohol burst into flames. Look at this video. Hazmat teams from the Vernon and Wichita Falls Fire Departments responding to the situation. Shepard Air Force Base assisting. They were using foam suppression on these flames. 28 of the 98 cars on the train derailed at around 10 a.m. yesterday because the derailment happened over or under an overpass. The fire caused traffic to be rerouted. Luckily, no injuries reported. The cause of this fire still under investigation. And now to an update to a story we first brought you yesterday. We now know that a miner who was trapped in a collapsed mine near the Pennsylvania West Virginia border has died. Officials believe a section of the roof of the Lakeland mine fell into equipment where the miner was working. They say the miner was not responsive after being removed from the mine and was pronounced dead at the scene. Right now, the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection has ceased production at that mine to figure out what exactly caused that collapse. And dozens of people are safe after having to be rescued from a Wisconsin ice flow this weekend. And for those who don't know what an ice flow essentially is, it's a floating ice sheet. Officials there say 34 people were pulled off the shore of Point Comfort in Green Bay. The barge traffic may have weakened the ice on the bay's east shore. Right now, there were no reports of any injuries, and officials warned the surrounding communities that the ice should not be used for recreational use. It is 2022, and with the start of the new year, so many people have new goals and resolutions. We always hear about fitness resolutions. We hear about people working to eat healthier in the new year. But what about financial resolutions? What about saving more money this year, setting yourself up for the future? So that is why later this morning on Leading SA at 8 a.m., a specialist with Victory Capital joining us live. We're going to be talking about a variety of topics, ranging from a financial health checkup to saving for your child's education and their future to budgets for the new year. If you have any questions you would like to ask, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us later this morning, Leading SA at 8 a.m. for all the answers. In your consumer news, smelly mattresses and chemicals. Interesting. So that odor that sometimes comes from a new mattress, it's often caused from chemicals used in the manufacturing process. Well, when your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us how to find a mattress that's made with fewer chemicals. Shopping for a new mattress? Here's a term you'll see, off-gassing. Off-gassing refers to that chemical smell you get when you cut into the packaging around a new mattress. What you're actually smelling are volatile organic compounds, or VOCs, and they come from solvents used during the manufacturing process. 
If that's a turnoff, you can find a mattress with lower amounts of VOCs. Start with the label. Don't be fooled by a mattress that's labeled natural. There's no formal certification for what natural means. And a mattress can also be labeled organic, even if it only has a small amount of organic material. Consumer Report says a reliable label is the Global Organic Textile Standards, or GOTS, label. It requires the materials contain a minimum amount of certified organic materials and ensures that no hazardous chemical flame retardants and polyurethane foam were used. You'll find a similar standard for latex mattresses with the GOLS label, Global Organic Latex Standard. Of course, labels don't matter if the mattress isn't comfy, so Consumer Reports tested them for support for back and side sleepers and for how well they'll hold up over eight years. They say if you like a mattress on the firmer side, this avocado green is great at keeping all sizes of sleeper spines aligned. They say my green mattress natural escape is another good option for all types and sizes of sleepers. If you prefer a softer mattress, check out this Birch by Helix. For larger, tall side sleepers, the support was just so-so, but tests found it fits the bill for everybody else. Marilyn Moritz, KSET 12 News. Time now, 637, 56 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, local high school football all-stars. Got to have one more game. Yeah, that's right. So very exciting time to be in San Antonio. It was happening at the Dome. We're going to have the highlights, some of the biggest names in and around our area. Imagine not being able to easily brush your own hair, turn off a faucet, or reach for the brakes of your car. Just ahead, why one woman is becoming a champion for others who are short in stature and helps them overcome all the odds. Taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 56 degrees out there. Not a pretty sight right now, but what is the rest of the weekend? What does the work week look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Welcome back. Achondroplasia is the most common genetic form of dwarfism. It affects 1 in 20,000 people. Right now, there is no cure, but some patients may opt for surgery to lengthen their arms or their legs. RJ Marquez has more on a young woman who has become a champion for others who have dwarfism in their hopes they'll feel comfortable weighing all their options. As far back as she can remember, Chandler Cruz knew she was the smallest girl in school and dance class. It kind of finally clicked at 16. I was like, oh, like I'm really not growing anymore. Like, this is it. Full grown at three feet, 10 inches, born with achondroplasia, Chandler's size made it tough to drive a car or use a public restroom. It, they were kind of like a challenge. Plus, a severe bow in her legs started to cause back and hip pain. Chandler decided to undergo limb lengthening. She decided that she needed a little more to be able to do the things she needed to do. Chandler started documenting her journey. She had one surgery that added four inches to her arms and a new, less invasive follow-up procedure on her legs that added a total of 13 inches in height. Today, I am 4'11". But getting here wasn't easy, physically or emotionally. Now, limb lengthening is a controversial treatment in the dwarfism community. Push out against me, Chandler. Good. And this one. Pull back. And some are even angry at her for doing it. That's why she founded the Chandler Project, a nonprofit that provides the latest information on medical advances and supports those considering it. In addition to founding the Chandler Project, Chandler Cruz has been a public speaker at schools, national and international conferences. She has also testified before the Food and Drug Administration about the challenges of living with the condition. RJ Marcus, KSAT 12 News. All right, well, switching to weather, 643, 56 degrees, a little warmer now than it was yesterday, Sarah. Yeah, in fact, this is uh, pretty normal for this time of year, uh, but we are seeing some uh, fog out there in the hill country mainly. Let's take a look out there with visibility. As you can see, it looks a lot better than it did yesterday morning around San Antonio, and it's really not uh, very, very damp out there. There's definitely some puddles out there, but nothing like what we were dealing with yesterday. Up in the hill country, though, visibility is lower, uh, down to a quarter of a mile in Kerrville and Fredericksburg, but that cold front is right on the hill country's doorstep, going to be moving through there shortly. 
and that'll take out the humidity, take out the fog, uh, and uh, start to drop the temperatures a little bit in some places. Uh, but in Uvalde and Eagle Pass, visibility is down to half a mile. Let's take a look at the satellite and radar. It's quiet around San Antonio. We do have some showers out near the Houston area and a huge storm complex across parts of the Mississippi, the Appalachian Mountains, and then up into New England. There's an ice storm going on across parts of uh, the Northeast and New England. This is that same system that's going to be swinging a cold front through South Central Texas, but we're on the tail end of this, and this is not a particularly very strong cold front. And in fact, you can see that although there is a significant temperature difference from the panhandle all the way to the Corpus Christi, uh, temperatures are below freezing in Amarillo and in the 70s in Corpus Christi, we're really not dealing with Arctic, Arctic air, like what we were dealing with last weekend. It will, however, make for noticeable differences today. First, let's go ahead and take a look at local temperatures. It is 37 in Junction. That front has moved through the Junction area. Again, it's right moving through the Hill Country as we speak. It's 58 in Pleasanton, 55 in San Antonio, and 50, uh, 47 in Del Rio. Temperatures will top off behind that front. Actually, we're going to warm up a little bit behind that front. I know it seems uh, counterintuitive, but it's true. We'll be in the low to mid 60s this afternoon around San Antonio, but in the hill country topping off in the 50s. So a bit of a temperature spread. And then in the second part of the afternoon and into the evening, you'll notice the temperature drop by uh, midnight. We'll be in the low 40s around San Antonio, upper 30s in the hill country. And by the start of the morning tomorrow, upper 30s is a good bet around San Antonio, likely touching freezing in the hill country early tomorrow morning, but no freeze expected in San Antonio. So in addition to the temperature drop, you're also going to notice that the winds are going to pick up this afternoon. Winds are going to gust from 25 to 30 miles per hour, and it's going to get really windy tonight. Winds are going to gust up to 35 to 40 miles per hour late this evening. So you'll notice the winds, you'll notice the temperature drop, and even tomorrow it's going to stay breezy with winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour. And then finally, you're going to notice that it's going to be a lot less humid outside we've seen the fog out there but with that front moving through uh, dew points are going to drop from the 50s into the 30s this afternoon and then by the start of the day tomorrow it's going to be bone dry out there. Chapstick weather for sure with uh, dew points in the teens and 20s in many places around the Alamo City. This cold front that's going to move through today, again, it's not going to bring Arctic air, but it is going to allow for things to be cool for us Monday and Tuesday and even on Wednesday. We will see a bit of a warm up Thursday and Friday. Our next front is expected to move through Friday night into Saturday. That'll knock us back down into the 50s for most of the weekend. But still, even though this Arctic front is not an Arctic front. It is going to make things a little bit cooler in the week ahead. I wish I could say that this front was going to bring us some rain today, but it's just not. And even in the week ahead, we really don't have significant chances for rain. An isolated shower is possible Thursday, stray shower possible Friday. And with that next front Friday night into Saturday, we could see a few showers. But again, no substantial rain in the forecast over the next seven days. So we got a little bit of rain yesterday, but it looks like that's about it for the next a few days. So just a reminder today, although it's cloudy out there right now, we are going to see some sunshine today. Good mixture of sun and clouds this afternoon. We'll be able to get up to 65 right at about 2 p.m. It's a little bit earlier than our usual high temperature, and then we'll see our temperatures drop into the 50s and into the 40s tonight. It'll be chilly and it'll be windy too, so that 47 will likely feel like it's more in the 30s. Wind gusts up to 35 to 40 miles per hour tonight, and a cold start tomorrow, cold start Tuesday, but again, Again, I do think we'll stay above freezing in San Antonio with uh, temperatures rebounding into the 70s by Friday. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 648, 56 degrees out. It was an all-star event last night. That's right, an electric atmosphere at the Dome. Some of the best and brightest football stars taken center stage, center field, really. We have all the highlights, some of the big names you need to know. Before we head to break, let's take a look outside with TransGuide. Traffic looks like it is Sailing pretty smooth out there, especially compared to the fog we had yesterday morning. All right, let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, nine, two, fireball eight, daily four, three, one, zero, six, fireball six. Cash five, seven, nine, 13, 18, 29, Texas lotto, two, four, six, 14, 16, 42. And that powerball back to that lower number, 20, 20 million. <laughs> 
20, 21, 36, 60, 65, Powerball 13, Power Play 10. Good morning and welcome back. High School Football had the Alamo Dome rocking yesterday and it played host to the annual San Antonio All-Star Game presented by HGB. Let's roll the highlights. There we go. Southside head coach Ricky Locke leading Team Gold against former Johnson head coach Mark Soto and Team Black. First quarter action. Wait for it. Wait for it. There we go. Team Black's defense putting points on the board. Here we go. Pleasanton's A.J. Ayala sacking Bernie's Rayshon Galloway in the end zone. That is a safety, and that is two points. The ensuing drive, Central Catholic Silas Gomez looks left. Pass picked off by Madison's Miguel Becker. A huge takeaway for Team Gold, giving them the possession. 30-yard line, they convert into points. Inside handoff, New Braunfels' Riker Purdy. That is a two-yard score. They go for two, taking an 8-2 lead. That's scored halftime. Let's go to the third quarter. Team Black at the two-yard line. Gomez is pass tipped and caught by Canyon Lake's very own Jeremy Green. Back in the end zone. Two-yard score, giving Team Black a 9-8 lead. Low-scoring game, but Team Gold comes back to win this one 18-9. So there you go. Some of the best and brightest in around San Antonio. Speaking of San Antonio, we have Spurs today. Early action, back in the court. Road game in New York at the Barkley Center, taking on the Brooklyn Nets. So, in terms of the Spurs, I know everyone's interested. A little pessimism going on and around. Mm -hmm. They sit at 15 and 23. So, the silver and black, technically the 10 seed. That means that they would be in the postseason. Remember, after the pandemic hit, the NBA playoff reconfiguration moved the 7 to 10 seeds. They fight it out for the playoffs. It's almost like a wild card or like a playoff for the playoffs. And here's a fun stat. Even with a losing record, 15 and 23, they still score... 0.01 more points on average than are scored on them. So Wait, so does that mean we got... They have a winning uh, differential. But it, are, does the Spurs make the, t the 10 spot? They are the 10 seed. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. that's all I need to know. It's still a long season, but that was just a fun fact of the morning. And you can count on the sports guys covering all these games and more tonight on Instant Replay. Make sure to tune in 11 p.m. right after the night beat. You got Thanks, it? I got Here it. Go. Okay. 654, if it's seven degrees out. We'll be right back. San Antonio police investigating a shooting taking place just north of downtown. We know one person has been shot. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. We've learned the victim has been taken to Bamsey in critical condition. And right now, police are looking for the suspects involved in the shooting. This was the scene just before three this morning. San Antonio police responding to this 7-Eleven on San Pedro, just north of downtown. They say the clerk at the 7-Eleven was taking a break outside the store when an argument started between him and a group of four men that were hanging around outside. Now we've learned one of the men in that group pulled out a gun and shot the clerk several times. Now again, police are still looking for the suspects involved in the shooting. We'll keep you updated as more information is made available. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, COVID cases mounting across the country. The U.S. now averaging more than 614,000 cases per day as dozens of hospitals in New York are stopping elective surgeries again. And one governor asking President Biden to direct the CDC and FDA to allow a fourth vaccine dose to certain at-risk residents. We'll break down the latest details. Plus, a major court battle hours away for the world's top-ranked tennis player, Novak Djokovic, after the Australian government canceled his visa for failing to meet its vaccination entry requirements. The Grand Slam champion confined to an immigration detention hotel. What the Serbian prime minister is now saying about those conditions. Also this morning, the $10 billion James Webb telescope, NASA's largest and most powerful space science telescope ever launched into space, completes its final phase inside the dramatic and complicated mission. It's all ahead here on GMA. We'll get up to 65 degrees today, but a cold front is going to move through. That'll make it breezy this afternoon and especially tonight. By tomorrow morning, we'll be in the 30s. In the afternoon, both tomorrow and Tuesday, highs will only be in the upper 50s. So a little bit of a cool spell ahead for us here. As far as rain chances go, doesn't look great this week. Best chance for rain is Saturday of this upcoming weekend. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We have so much coming up at 8 a.m. That's right. Before we get to leading essay, we do 
want to note that Jonathan Cotto will be live with the search group that's starting at 9 a.m. as they continue to search for that three-year-old Lena Kill. That's right. And on Leading SA, we have a specialist with Victory Capital talking about financial resolutions. It's 2022. We always hear about health resolutions, so why not save some more money? We explain how. We'll see you at 8. Get financially fit. Boom. <laughs> Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Although the Amber Alert has been discontinued, the search for three-year-old Lena Kill continues. We have details on what the local Afghan community is doing to continue their search efforts. Coming up next. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, we are just about at 60 degrees. So what is the rest of the day? Will the sun come out? What is it going to look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. But until then, Good morning. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday, January 9th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Happy Sunday. Did you take the Christmas decorations down? I did. You did? Not outside, okay. though. The indoor ones. Okay. The indoor so ones. So just the tree. The tree, some garland, some stockings. You know what? I like the Christmas decorations in the house still up because, it, you know, 2020 to 2022 has been tough. Keep the jolly it, atmosphere It kind of warms everything, Sarah, but the sun always eventually does come out, doesn't it? And we will see some sunshine today, but I will warn you, Sarah, you may want to get those Christmas decorations put up outside or else Mother Nature is going to do it for you because yes, we expect wind gusts of up to 35 miles per hour later on today and into the evening hours. Take a look outside right now. You can see that on the horizon there are a few peaks of sunshine. There is some sun out across parts of the hill country and out west toward Del Rio, but it's still fairly cloudy around the Alamo City, and we are seeing some areas where visibility is lower because of fog, namely up in Kerrville and across parts of the valleys of the hill country. That's where we're dealing with the fog this morning. Visibility low out in Eagle Pass as well, down to less than two miles, but this fog in the hill country is going to be short-lived because a cold front is on the way. Take a look at temperatures, uh, kind of all over the place, right? We're near 60 degrees in Seattle. Antonio and in New Braunfels, but up in the hill country, it's in the 40s and it's in the 30s in Junction in, in the upper hill country. Now we are going to see a front move through today. That front is currently working its way through the hill country as we speak and a big temperature spread across Texas. 20s in the Panhandle and 70s in uh, in Corpus Christi this morning. So that front's going to be moving through uh, during the morning, this mid morning into the early afternoon. It'll move through San Antonio closer to lunch and we're still going to warm up a little bit in the early part of this afternoon. So I think we'll get into the mid to upper 60s this afternoon with partly cloudy skies and then in the evening you'll really notice the cooling trend and it's going to be windy too. Winds are going to gust from the north up to 35 miles per hour later on tonight and it'll get cold. Temperatures will be in the 30s to start the day tomorrow. How long will it be cool outside? I'll have a look ahead in just a few minutes. Sarah and Max. Thank you, Sarah. What well, has been three weeks since three year old Lena Keel was last seen and while the Amber Alert for her has been suspended, San Antonio police say they continue to follow up on leads and they are still trying to bring her home safely. The local Afghan community deeply impacted by Lena's disappearance. They have been actively assisting authorities in those search efforts. Jonathan Cotto is following this story and joins us live from the northwest side. Good morning, Jonathan. We understand a search party will be for Lena and they're going to be gathering at some time today. Good morning, Sarah, and that's right. The local Afghan community and others have not and will not just keep their arms crossed. And what I mean by that, Max and Sarah, is they've been actively ongoing in their search efforts in hopes of finding Lena. And today we know they're going to be gathering here at McDermott Elementary on the city's northwest side in hopes of finding her. And as you may recall, three-year-old Lena Kill disappeared from a playground within an apartment complex located on Fredericksburg Road on December 20th. Police told us at that time that her mother had left Lena at the playground for a few minutes and when she returned, her daughter was gone. Now, Lena had been subject of an Amber Alert for nearly three weeks. Last week, police say a new lead received led to them to a nearby creek two miles from where Lena was last seen. An FBI dive team was called in from Washington, D.C. to assist in their search efforts, but Lena was not found and their search efforts were obviously unsuccessful. Now, again, Max, Sarah, later this morning around 9 o'clock, that group is scheduled to meet here in this parking lot. We'll keep you updated with the latest. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
Well, new this morning, convenience store clerk shot while taking his break overnight after police say he got into an argument with four other men. This happened just before 3 a.m. at the 7-Eleven on San Pedro near West Cypress Street, just north of downtown. Police say the four men were hanging around the outside of the store and one of them pulled out a gun and shot the clerk several times. The four men ran away before officers arrived and police are still looking for them. The store clerk is taken to Bamsey for treatment. Other top stories we are following this morning. We are still waiting to learn the names of the two drivers killed in a fiery crash on the city's north side yesterday. So limited details right now, but this is what we now know. The crash happened at the intersection of Bulverde Road and TPC Parkway right near Johnson High School. Still unclear what exactly caused the two cars to collide, but Bear County Sheriff's investigators say both vehicles burst into flames, trapping the drivers inside. A woman stuck in water for about eight hours after she crashed her SUV into the Medina River on the south side yesterday around 3 a.m. yesterday. Neighbors near South Flores Road heard a crash and when they went outside, they saw the woman's SUV in the river. When officials arrived, they found the woman sitting nearby in waist high water. She was conscious but injured. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say the woman was driving southbound on South Flores when she lost control of her car went into the grass and skidded into the Medina River. No one else was injured in that crash. We are nine days into the new year and with the start of the new year, so many people have new goals, resolutions. We always hear about fitness resolutions. We hear about we hear about eating healthier, but what about financial resolutions? What about saving more money this year? Financially fit. Financially fit. That's what we're calling it. All right, joining us in today's leading essay segment is Victor, Victory Capital's Manak Dillon. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So right off the bat, why is the new year a great time for a financial health checkup? And what exactly does that mean? You know, it's time for the new. New year, new resolutions, and new beginnings. And it's a great time to set a, on your calendar to say, Take a look at what's going on financially in your life. A lot can change over the last year, and, and it's a good time to step back and, and make sure you're hitting the, the new year, in this case, 2022, head on. It, take, it means reflecting on those financial goals you had. Did you achieve everything you set out to last year, whether that was from a saving, investing, or budget perspective? You know, things uh, might be different. People might be trying to save for a house. Maybe they had a baby, and they want to figure out how to save for their college education. So it's a great time of year to do that. So what would you say are three things that people can keep in mind financially for the new year? First and foremost, make a budget, review a budget. So take a look at the last year. Did you spend money in the places you thought? Did you maybe things came up that were surprises? And I always like to tell people, don't forget to pay yourself in that budget. You know, oftentimes we sit down and we look at all the places that our money goes there isn't a line item for ourselves in terms of savings and investing. And, and that's really then the second thing, save for a rainy day. We know unexpected things happen. We just went through a terrible pandemic. Save for a rainy day, have enough expenses uh, off to the side, and then invest for the future, not only yours, but also your children's. And you know this can mean start investing if you haven't already, or if you're already investing, taking a look at how you're going about it. You don't need a lot of money to get started. That's, I think, one of the things that people don't understand. You know, we have clients that call us every day to start an automatic investment plan with as little fifty dollars a month, and that's a, that's something that is achievable for for most folks, and they can take advantage of the compounding the market offers, as well as they don't have to try to time the market that way. Uh, it's a great time to look at your existing portfolio as well, like your four hundred one k plan, your retirement plans, and then don't forget the kids. Those education savings plans are a great way. And, and, you know, nowadays you can use them for more than college. You can use them for high school, middle school and elementary. Now, 2021 was kind of, I don't want to say easy, but in perspective of history, it was a less volatile year than we've had in years past. So what are you telling clients about investing in the markets in 2022? Well, first of all, it's about always remember the basics. Right. Make sure you're investing and you're investing enough to meet those goals you have. Uh, take a look at, like I said, those retirement plans, those contributions and, and what you're setting aside. And then the next thing is, are you diversified appropriately? And what that really means is, do you have the right mix of different assets? So this could be bonds, this could be stocks, could be real estate and other things, commodities. 
And don't try to time market swings, right? You, you mentioned last year wasn't as volatile, but this year perhaps could be. So you don't want to try to time the uh, exits and the entry points or chase that hot dot from a return perspective. But once you've gotten through those basics, it's going to be an interesting year. Uh, a lot of focus is going to be on the Federal Reserve. Uh, there's going to be a lot of focus on interest rates and inflation, like we've already heard about. And those aren't just things that Wall Street needs to worry about. They're going to impact everyday life for everybody. And so it never hurts to seek out an expert to discuss ideas. You know, every day we have thousands of investors that call us to help navigate or understand what's going on in their portfolio in the market and talk through issues like these. What about cryptocurrency? That's kind of the, the big trend right now. What would your advice be for anyone wanting to get into crypto? Yeah, it's it's definitely an interesting new space. Um, you know, the underlying technology behind it has the potential to be quite disruptive for all things we we deal with in everyday life. Um, you know, it is appropriate for some people. You know, but they have to step back and think about: Can I handle the volatility? Can I? When should I allocate? Which one should I allocate to? I think it's like anything. Um, you have to. It's like building a house, right? You have a foundation of your portfolio and then you start to put up the walls and then you do other little things. Um, you know, it's never a good idea to have all of your portfolio in something as volatile. So I, I think it's something people have to step back and, and take a look at back to what are my goals? What am I trying to achieve? And does an asset class like that fit into it? And, and obviously you can tell from the the coverage and the interest and the conversation out there many people have gotten to that conclusion all right mr monic Dillon, thank you so much for your time this morning really appreciate it and good luck to everyone out there listening for 2022 in the future thanks for having me time now 8 11 59 degrees now well coming up next on gmsa take some time to just relax mm. how about meditating and we're going to talk about how it can powerfully affect your brain Scientists estimate that between 200 million to 500 million people meditate worldwide, and more than 14% of Americans have meditated at least once. This popular practice is known to improve focus, and it may make you feel better. But as RJ Marquez reports, research is also showing it has a powerful effect on the brain. It can help you focus, keep you calm, and now research is showing meditation may also improve the way your brain works. May I be peaceful? A study out of UCLA may found that people happy. who meditated for an average of 20 years had more gray matter volume throughout their brains. Gray matter helps you control movements, maintain memories, regulate emotions, and more. A review from Johns Hopkins found mindfulness meditation helped reduce symptoms of depression, anxiety, and pain. And a team of researchers at Harvard found eight weeks of mindfulness meditation actually increased cortical thickness in regions of the brain, including the hippocampus. That's an area that rules learning and memory. Anyone can meditate. If you're new to the practice, try to set aside five to 10 minutes each day. Find a place where you feel calm. Sit and focus on your body and your breath. And if your mind wanders, gently guide it back. Other studies have shown that meditation can reduce the risk of being hospitalized for coronary disease by 87%, and it can relieve the symptoms of insomnia 75% of the time. RG Marcus, KSAT 12 News. All right, let's take a quick live look out of the Alamo City. 60 degrees out there. Sarcos, you were saying you meditate while you walk. Yes, and I walk every single day, and I have not walked in the last two days. Mm. And I'm feeling, I think my dogs are feeling it more. But today, Sarah, is do I will I have a chance? Will the weather play nicer? Oh yeah, we're not going to have any rain today, so okay. uh, you know it's a little damp in spots early this morning. We've got some sprinkles and some fog, but later on today you should be able to take the dogs for a walk and, and take a look at the visible satellite imagery here. A couple of things I want to focus on. First. You may be seeing some sunshine if you're on the northwest side of San Antonio. The skies have cleared there briefly for a bit, uh, but otherwise it's fairly cloudy around San Antonio. Another cool thing, you see what looks like fingers here uh, in the hill country. That's some fog in the valleys of the hill country that's starting to dissipate early this morning. A cold front is on the way and it is going to drop temperatures mainly tonight, 
but it's still uh, going to make things windy even earlier before then. So as I mentioned, there is some fog in the valleys of the hill country up in Kerrville. Visibility is practically zero uh, in out to the west toward Eagle Pass. Visibility is less than two miles. There is a front that is going to be moving through here very shortly. That's going to bring in drier air and again, it's going to allow for a, a cool Monday for us. Now look at the temperatures right now, kind of all over the place, right? We've got 60 degrees in San Antonio, but the 40s in the hill country and the 30s further up north toward Junction. So that front is working its way through the hill country. It's going to move through San Antonio closer to lunch and it's going to really kick up our winds. Let's take a wider view here and see just how cold this air is behind it. Now it is below freezing in the panhandle. I don't think we're going to have to deal with the freeze in San Antonio, but something to keep in mind is this is not a, an Arctic front. We're not seeing very, very frigid temperatures. So this is a noticeable front, but it's not necessarily strong. Another thing to notice is that all of the rain and storminess with this cold front in this system is well to the east of San Antonio. In fact, last night the Houston area had to deal with some severe weather, but we're not going to see any rain from this front. It is going to be dry and instead what we'll be seeing is is uh, windy conditions really during the second part of today. Take a look at forecast temperatures. Even after that front moves through, we're still going to be able to warm up a little bit because we'll have a little bit of sunshine. And so high temperatures today should actually be in the mid to upper 60s around San Antonio, staying in the 50s in the hill country. And then that front is going to move through uh, throughout the evening hours. We'll see temperatures falling by midnight will be in the 40s. So by midnight, we'll be chilly with a wind chill and by the start of tomorrow morning we'll be looking at morning low in the 30s and wind chills will likely be in the 20s in some places early tomorrow morning. So it is going to get cold tomorrow and it is going to become gusty today, especially during the second part of the day and into the evening hours. Winds are going to gust up to 35 miles per hour tonight. So if you have yet to put up your Christmas decorations, Mother Nature may do it for you and those gusty north winds are probably going to kick up the mountain cedar as well. Now it will be cool tomorrow after that cold start we will be at 58 tomorrow for the high temperature 58 on Tuesday after a cold start as well and then we'll slowly see a warm up. We'll be back into the 70s by Friday. So here's a look at your forecast around noon will be partly cloudy and breezy 67 for the high temperature at about 2 p.m. and then we'll start to cool as soon as the sun starts to set temperatures will fall quickly. We'll be in the 40s by 10 p.m. And as I mentioned, a gradual warm up into the 70s by Friday. As far as rain chances go, it does not look great this week. We have a small chance for isolated rain behind a front Saturday. We'll be back with more news after the break. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. All right, if you're a Cowboys fan, you already know they close out the regular season with a spectacle last night in Philadelphia. First quarter, Cowboys opening drive, Dak Prescott showing up and showing out. Cedric Wilson, 15-yard touchdown. We're tied at seven. Second quarter, Dak and Cedric Wilson, another one. This time, 24 yards. Thank you, Sarah Costa. Another one. Cowboys lead 17-10, and just a few plays later, it's now 17-all. Dak, Dalton Schultz, touchdown. 23-17 Dallas. Point after no good, just after halftime. Another one. Dak Fine and Schultz again, nine-yard touchdown. Cowboys rolling against the Eagles backups. 30-17 and a half, early fourth quarter. Dak, Sarah? Another one. Another one. Still in the game. Fifth touchdown pass of the night. A new career high. This one to former Eagle Corey Clement. Eight yards. Cowboys led 37-20. That is Dak's 37th touchdown pass. A new franchise record. He broke Tony Romo's mark of 36. Dak's night is done, and they destroy the Eagles 51-26. to So there we go. Not going to forget our other pro Texas team. Texans hosting Tennessee Titans today for the final regular season game of the season. Game set for noon. And here we go, here at home, Southside head coach Ricky Locke leading Team Gold against former Johnson head coach Mark Soto and Team Black in last night's All-Star game at the Alamo Dome. Let's roll the highlights. First quarter, Team Black's defense, first points on the board because you get sacked in the end zone. That's a safety. Pleasanton's A.J. Ayala. There you go. Next drive, Central Catholic Silas Gomez looks left, pass intercepted by Madison's 
Miguel Becker. A huge takeaway for Team Gold, giving them possession at the 30-yard line. They convert it into points because inside handoff goes to New Braunfels Riker Purdy, and he is in for a two-yard score. They go for two, and they convert it to take an 8-2 lead. That's the score at halftime. Here we go, third quarter. Team Black at the two-yard line. Gomez tip. Boom! Caught by Canyon Lakes' Jeremy Green back at the end zone. Two-yard touchdown. Team Black, 9-8 lead, but Team Gold rallies, winning 18-9. We got a lot going on today. The Spurs taking on the Brooklyn Nets in New York. Barclays Center, an early game tip-off set for 11 a.m. And you can count on the sports guys covering all these games and so much more. Great analysis tonight on Instant Replay. Tune in tonight, 11 p.m., right after the night beat. So there you go. If you're bored, we have so much to do. 826, 60 degrees out. We'll be right back. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Acosta. It's Sunday, January 9th. Thank you so much for waking up with us, and hopefully it's enough, It's going to be a different day here locally than the weather we experienced yesterday. Yesterday was kind of like that sit around on the couch all day weather. That's true. It's kind of calm and quiet here, but Sarah, you were saying Houston area got some interesting weather. Yeah, they got some severe storms last night, some flooding and even potentially a tornado out near the Humble area. Uh, pictures of damage coming in. So far, no descriptions of injuries, but that was out in Houston. Uh, here in San Antonio, some people are waking up to the first bit of sunshine in a few days. Take a look at the uh, Saturday satellite picture here. San Antonio half and half in clouds and in sun. So we really do have some cloud cover from I-35 out to Highway 90 and south in the clouds right now as we speak. But on the northwest side of town and the north side of town, uh, some sunshine to start the day. It is colder up in the hill country. It's 45 degrees in Kerrville. Meanwhile, near 60 around San Antonio. But we have got a cold front on the way and that cold front is going to make things very breezy for us and gradually drop temperatures temperatures during the second part of the day today. Take a look at the temperatures around the area. 35 in Junction. That's where the cold front has already moved through and it's currently pushing through the Fredericksburg area. It'll meet a San Antonio later on during the later morning hours. And the first thing you'll notice is how windy it's going to get. Winds are going to gust from the north during the afternoon up to about 25 to 30 miles per hour. But in the evening tonight, they'll gust up to 35 to 40 miles per hour. That, of course, will Usher and drier and cooler air for us, but it's also probably going to increase the mountain cedar as well. We've yet to get the pollen count in for the day, but I'll have an update for you as soon as that comes in. So here's a look at today's forecast. We'll get up to 67 degrees. Even after the front moves through, we'll actually warm up a little bit with some, some sunshine. And then tonight, temperatures will plummet into the low 40s by midnight, and it'll get windy. I'll tell you how cold we'll be tomorrow morning coming up in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, a man in critical condition after police tell us he was shot while leaving a hookah lounge early this morning. This is what we know right now. It happened around 3 a.m. outside the business on West Avenue, just north of Bassey Road. Now, investigators say the man was walking to his vehicle when someone driving bar started shooting at him. He was shot in the leg. Now, officers on the scene telling us he lost a lot of blood. Police still working through the morning trying to figure out what exactly led to this gunfire. And investigators still searching for who was responsible. An argument between a woman and her ex-boyfriend ends with a woman injured and the man on the run around 1 o'clock this morning. Officers got a call for a fight between a woman and her ex-boyfriend in the parking lot of the Warsbach Ice House. They say when the man tried leaving the parking lot, he hit the woman with his vehicle and then took off. The woman hit her head on the pavement and was taken to University Hospital for treatment. At last check, police were still searching for the suspect. All right, it is a story we've covered extensively over the last three weeks. The search continues for missing three-year-old Lena Keel. San Antonio police have discontinued the Amber Alert, but they are continuing to aggressively follow up on any leads they can get. And the local Afghan community deeply impacted by Lena's disappearance. They have been actively assisting police in those search efforts. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the latest. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah, and that's right. The local Afghan community and others have been very involved, very active in their search efforts in hopes of finding Lena. We know a search is scheduled to take place later this morning, but as you may recall, three-year-old Lena disappeared from a playground within an apartment complex located in, on Fredericksburg Road on December 20th. Police told us at the time that her mother had left Lena at the playground for a few minutes, and when she returned, her daughter was gone. Lena had been a subject of an Amber Alert for nearly three weeks. Last week, police say a new lead received 
led them to a nearby creek two miles from where Lena was last seen. An FBI dive team was called in from Washington, D.C. to assist in the search effort but Lena, for Lena, but the dive team into the murky waters was not unsuccessful. Now, San Antonio police remind the public if anyone has any information on Lena's whereabouts to call their missing persons unit at 210-207-7660. You will remain anonymous and, of course, we'll up to, update you with the latest. Reporting live, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Other top stories. The punishment phase will continue tomorrow morning for a man found guilty of killing his cousin back in 2020. It took the jury four and a half hours to convict Edison Gataman of murder on Friday. Christopher Gataman was shot and killed on March 27th back in 2020. The jury will now decide Edison Gataman's sentence during the punishment phase, which also began on Friday. He faces up to 99 years to life in prison. All right, tax season is here and parents out there, if you've received any child tax credit payments, there are some things you need to know when filing your taxes. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a story that explains all you need to know for tax season. Millions of qualifying families, well, they were sent monthly payments from July through December last year thanks to the American Rescue Plan Act. Now, as you get ready to file your taxes for 2022, make sure you understand how those payments could affect your refund and whether or not you may owe. The race for Texas governor kicked off officially yesterday as Governor Greg Abbott and Democratic challenger Beto O'Rourke returned to the campaign trail along the U.S.-Mexico border. Governor Abbott formally announced his bid for a third term in McAllen yesterday. O'Rourke announced he was running for governor back in November. Both men have to get through that primary in March before facing one another. O'Rourke faces minimal primary opposition, while Abbott has a group of challengers who have been hounding him for the right for months. This weekend here locally and across the country, hospitals are filling up with COVID-19 patients. The Omicron wave sending caseloads sky high. The situation is especially concerning this morning in California, where the governor is calling in the National Guard to help. ABC's Zareen Shaw is live in L.A. with the latest. This morning, hospitals nearing their breaking point across the country. Over 80% of staffed ICU beds for adults now occupied. And cases exploding too. The U.S. reporting an average of over 614,000 cases daily, a six-fold increase from early last month. The number of COVID-positive patients spiking in Southern California. 44,000 new COVID cases reported on Friday in just L.A. County, breaking their record from just the previous day. California Governor Gavin Newsom activating the National Guard to help expand testing. And officials still urging people to get vaccinated. But 26-year-old Winter Ho wasn't. She landed in the hospital for seven months, finally released this weekend. I developed pneumonia really quickly. And then from there, my lungs collapsed. I couldn't breathe. This pandemic has been terrible and really sad. I have seen people pass away many, many times in the hospital. In Wichita, Kansas, doctors are feeling the strain and saying they're just waiting for beds to open up. If you don't have ventilators, if you don't have certain things, there are some things you just can't manage yet. It's a daily occurrence where we get multiple phone calls and um, we're unable to help. And 40 hospitals in New York State now ordered to stop elective surgeries because of low patient capacity. This as CDC Director Rochelle Walensky comes under fire for confusion over her agency changing isolation and quarantine guidelines. This is hard and I am committed and to continue to improve as we learn more about the science and to communicate that with all of you. And here in California, the governor's office telling me he will propose 2.7 million in his budget tomorrow to expand testing and vaccinations. Zorin Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles. And back here locally, Metro Health says they will begin offering COVID booster shots for children 12 to 15 years old starting Wednesday, January 12th. They're going to be available at the Alamo Dome drive through clinic and, of course, at all the other pop-up clinics hosted by Metro Health. And to ease the demand of COVID-19 testing, District 6 is providing multiple days of testing at Guftison Stadium off of Culebra Road. The free drive through service is open to everyone and no appointment is necessary. They will be open from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. starting tomorrow through Thursday. District 6 is working with Abundant Life Christian Fellowship Church, Northside ISD, and Community Wellness America to make this testing available. 
Time now, just about 840, 60 degrees out. Well, coming up next on GMSA, a new year means new episodes of KSAT Explains, and the team is already hard at work. We'll get a preview of their newest episode. That's after the break. But first, quick look at birthdays. Here we go. First up, Kylie, 10 years old. Happy birthday. You can always send in your birthday shout outs. We love to see the pictures, love the celebrations. Just head to KSAT.com. Click on the birthday section under the entertainment tab. You'll be able to click the person's birthday month, upload the picture, or to include a name and an age. You might see their picture on TV. Sunday with Ukraine in the crosshairs, Russia's new Kazakhstan intervention. The Secretary of State, how will we respond? Plus the insurrection one year later, where do we go from here? And Martha reliving the day with the rioters. Sunday on ABC's This Week. Good morning and welcome back. A new episode of KZAD Explains. It is out this Tuesday. This week, the team is breaking down how a provision in federal law known as Title 42 has affected the United States already complicated immigration system. Had a lot of work went into this. Meyer Arthur, give us a preview. Immigration is one of the biggest hot button issues in our current political moment, and it's often named among the issues that voters care most about. It does have a real effect on real people. In the past few years, we've seen several instances where a surge in border apprehensions sparks new debate about who should be allowed into the United States and how to reform our immigration system. At this point, there have never been more immigration cases pending. But this topic is a complicated one, and in the eyes of immigration laws, not everyone who tries to enter the U.S. is the same. And the pandemic has further complicated things for those seeking safety in our country. They were crossing in plain view, just trying to get here so they could make an asylum claim. Based on our laws and international laws and norms, people have a right to uh, seek asylum. In this episode of KSAT Explains, we're breaking down the difference between how the U.S. handles asylum seekers and those who enter the country illegally and try to go undetected. Plus, we're also taking a look at a little known provision in federal law that is up into the system. Case that exp explains seeking asylum will be available to stream on demand this Tuesday. We'll live stream that episode at 7 p.m. on KSAT.com. And of course, on our Facebook page, if you can't watch it live, we'll post the full episode so you can watch it on demand later Tuesday evening. All right, let's take a quick live look out at the Alamo City. 61 degrees out there. The sun oh, is the out. out. Look at that. We got Yay. blue skies, Sarah Spivey. Yeah, happy to see that sunshine out there for the first time in a while here in San Antonio. Now it is some some people are seeing sun and others are still under cloud cover. So I'll show you that in a bit. First, I want to start off. We just got the pollen count in. Now I'll caution you, this pollen count's a little misleading. It's an accurate reading right now. Mountain cedar is down. It's moderate and molds are high from the rain that we saw yesterday. But let's keep in mind that mountain cedar is probably going to go up again uh, throughout the second part of the day today because we're going to get a stout wind from the north picking up that mountain cedar pollen. So again, accurate pollen count right now, but during the second part of the day, we're probably going to see mountain cedar up uh, quite a bit because of those uh, gusty north winds. Again, sunshine. We were really excited about that sunshine, seeing it for the first time in a while here, but it's still registering as cloudy at the airport because some areas are still seeing cloud cover, especially south of Highway 90 this morning. Uh, you can see that uh, that cloud cover is fairly stubborn out near Stenson, oh, overcast skies in Pleasanton as well and in Seguin. But we're seeing sun at Bernie Stage Airfield up the Kerrville. Temperatures are uh, mild. It's 62 degrees right now at the airport. Able to see that sun, able to boost up those temperatures a bit. But look at the cold air coming our way. In Junction, it's 35 degrees and we're going to see uh, that cold front move through throughout this morning and in the afternoon during the second part of the afternoon the temperatures will start to fall pretty rapidly. There's still a little bit of fog out in Kerrville right now ahead of that front and some fog in Eagle Pass where visibility is down to zero and on the satellite and radar quiet around San Antonio but again out near the Houston area that's where we had some severe weather yesterday tornado report out near Houston.
Uh, and looking at a wide view, you can see just how extensive this system is. Rainfall across the Appalachians and an ice storm across parts of New York and snow in New England. There's our front. It's on the doorstep. And again, it's not a particularly strong cold front, although you can clearly see the temperature difference here below freezing in the panhandle 70s on the coastal plain. We're not going to see a crazy drastic drop in temperatures, but one thing you'll notice is that we'll only be able to warm up a few degrees from where we are right now, likely into the upper 60s because that front's going to move through uh, and pretty much plateau our temperatures for us in the afternoon. It's during the second part of the afternoon that we'll see temperatures really fall so that by midnight we'll be in the low to mid 40s around San Antonio with a pretty stout wind chill. And then by the start of the morning tomorrow, likely going to see morning temperatures in the upper 30s. So close to 39 degrees in San Antonio for the morning low tomorrow. So it's going to be cold and there is going to be a wind chill in the low 30s and upper 20s around San Antonio. And as I mentioned, wind chill, we got to talk about those winds picking up. You'll know Notice the breeze this afternoon, even though it'll feel great outside. You'll notice those winds from the north gusting up to 25 to 30 miles per hour. And then especially late tonight, maybe while you're sleeping, you'll hear that wind outside because winds are going to gust up to about 35 to 40 miles per hour. We've been making the joke all morning long. If your Christmas decorations are still up outside, Mother Nature may take them down for you. So it's going to stay breezy tomorrow too. As I mentioned, a wind chill early in the morning and much drier air will be moving in behind that front by tomorrow we'll have bone dry air with dew points in the teens and 20s that's chapstick weather for sure now it's going to be cooler tomorrow 58 for the high and 58 on tuesday after another cold start and we'll slowly see those temperatures rise by friday we'll be in the 70s that front will move through friday night into saturday really giving us our only significant chance for rain and even then it's only a 30 percent chance all right for the remainder of the day today again partly cloudy skies for us temperatures will fall during the second part of the afternoon. Gusts up to 35 miles per hour tonight. It's going to get windy and breezy tomorrow too. 58 and cool Monday and Tuesday. Warm by Friday before that next cold front moves on through. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 850, 61 degrees out. The sports world saddened by the loss of coaching legend John Madden, but one South Texas family is sharing their unique tie to him in honor of his passing. We'll have that story tomorrow on GMSA. All right, a quick look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, eight, nine, two, fireball eight. Daily four, three, one, zero, six, fireball six. Cash five, seven, nine, 13, 18, 29. Texas lotto, two, four, six, 14, 16, 42. Powerball, 20, 21, 36, 60, 65. Powerball 13, power play 10. It's been three weeks since three-year-old Lena Kill disappeared, and although the Amber Alert has been suspended, San Antonio police say they are continuing to follow up on leads and the search for the little girl continues. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. Three-year-old Lena Kill disappeared from a playground within an apartment complex located on Fredericksburg Road on December 20th. Police told us at the time that her mother had left Lena at the playground for a few minutes, and when she returned, her daughter was gone. Lena had been a subject of an Amber Alert for nearly three weeks. Last week, police say a new lead received led them to a nearby creek, two miles from where Lena was last seen. An FBI dive team was called in from Washington, D.C. to assist in the search for Lena, but their dive into the murky waters of that creek were unsuccessful. Now, San Antonio Police Department reminds the public if you have any information on Lena's whereabouts to call their missing persons unit at 210-207-7660. Reporting Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. And a story to tell you about from early this morning, a convenience store clerk shot while taking his break after police say he got into an argument with four men outside the store. This happened just before 3 a.m. at the 7-Eleven on San Pedro near West Cypress Street. That's just north of downtown. Police tell us four men were hanging around outside the store. One of them pulled a gun, shot the clerk several times. The four men ran away before officers arrived. Police are still searching for them. The store clerk taken to Bamsey for treatment. 
Now during the day today, the main way you'll know that the front has moved through is because it's going to get breezy. Winds are going to gust up to 30 to 35 miles per hour, especially tonight. Temperatures will top off in the upper 60s, but eventually falling into the low 40s by midnight and will be in the upper 30s with a wind chill about 10 degrees colder tomorrow morning. So cold start tomorrow and cool days Monday and Tuesday ahead before a warm up by Friday. All right, once I see the sun come out at my house, I'll, I will take my decorations mm. down. Good. So those, the wind doesn't do it for me. <laughs> All right, Sarah Spivey, Sarah Costa, thank you so much, and thank you so much for watching. Have a great Sunday.